Hey now, everybody. What a fucking show we have for you today. This is Balls from Elwood. I'm excited to be here with you. So, uh, you know, we might as well not even fuck around here. Let's just get right into it. I got a ton of shit to talk about. I have a special guest lined up. Uh, I got some cool shit I'm going to play for you folks, as always. So, like, uh, let's just dig right in. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about, and uh, it was just something I was thinking about recently. Uh, have you ever noticed that, like, there's people that you know, they've lived their whole life being a fucking asshole, or, like, a mean, mean, vindictive fucking assholes, or, 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 you know, people that are just mean and cunty and fucking all-around horrible people that you just <laughs> wouldn't like to be around, or, you know, uh, it may have treated you terrible in life, but, uh, or even, like, celebrities or, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, that are more recognizable and... You follow the progress of their life, and you know they're just fucking degenerates and horrible fucking people, and they've treated people shitty their whole life, and they're just fucking, you know, just garbage people. And then, something happens. They die. And then you see in the media, or you talk to other people, like, and you know, that, that, that knew them, and then, then, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, they're... You know, they're not assholes anymore. It's funny. Like, how does death equal, like, you no longer being an asshole? It erases everything that you did in life that made people think you're a fucking douchebag. Uh, it erases everything that made people think you're a fuckface. Uh, you know, why is that? Like, I, I wouldn't want that to be the case for me. You know, if uh, somebody thinks I'm a fucking creep, like, I wouldn't want them to not think that after I died. Like, you know... You know, oh, that balls, he's a fucking cocksucker 365 days a year, and a fourth even. And then, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, he's dead. What a fucking hell of a guy he was. I have such good memories of that guy. He was such a good guy. I, I love that guy. Fuck you. If you think I'm a fucking cocksucker while I'm alive, I want you to think I'm a cocksucker when I'm dead. So, yeah, just, I don't know, just an observation that I think is very funny. Like, you see, like, uh... You know, like I said, celebrity types. It can even be people that you fucking know. But, like, it's so funny to me. I've seen it happen so many time and time again. I have to address it because it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, if, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think just the moral of the story is, you know, if uh, you think somebody's a dick uh, and they died, you know, I, I get it's supposed to be respect and you're paying respect to the dead. That's, that's, that's fine. But, you know, it doesn't excuse their life and the shitty things they did. So, I mean, yeah. You know, point being, if you're an asshole when you're alive, you're a fucking asshole when you're dead. That's a balls. Thing. And speaking of assholes, I have a question uh, to propose to you guys. Uh, what is the worst job that you guys ever had out there? Like, uh, you know, tell me what it is, because like, I'm going to share mine with you, but I would love to know uh, if you could top this. Uh, you send all emails to windychops1976 at gmail.com, as you cats know. But I was just uh, thinking back, uh, what is the worst job that you ever had? I mean, uh, are you are you happy in your job now? Like, uh, I'm pretty content, but, I mean, it's a frustration almost every single day because, you know, people are difficult. But I was thinking back, it could always be worse. Uh, the worst jobs I ever had was uh when i was younger uh you know looking for something uh probably uh right out of college i uh i had a short stint at a uh at a hotel i don't want to name what it is because i don't want to get sued but it sounds an awful lot like uh Shaladay and express uh but uh yeah i got a job there as a housekeeper and i only took it because i kind of really needed the money at the time but uh, the, the housekeeping staff was run by this, you know, militant, man-hating bull dyke. Uh, she was, she looked like a sea urchin with tits, and she had fucking hairy arms, and uh, just a really disgusting fucking individual. And uh, we, I was on the staff. Uh, you had, you had probably about 120 rooms to clean on your shift. Our, our staff was, uh, you know, comprised of, I think, a dude that just got out of jail for rape. Uh, a retarded girl that could barely tie her shoes and wipe her own ass. Uh, you know, uh, probably, uh, you know, a 45-year-old beat-up, like, fucking, you know, MILF. And, uh, you know, some, some older ladies that, uh, you know, they worked there so long that they thought their shit didn't sting. So, it falls. So, we're trying to do all this shit. I'm trying to clean rooms. So, uh, 
I never did at that point. I had never really, you know, I've never really did nothing like that. So, I mean, they give you guidelines that you're supposed to go in there and, you know, you're expected to restock everything. You're expected to change the sheets. You're expected to clean up all the mess that people do. And, you know, when you stay in a hotel, nobody gives a shit. People are dirty as fuck and it's nasty. So, uh, and plus you got to do all this in record time. So I start, you know, I start going in, I start cleaning the rooms and, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very slow at it. Like, you know, I'm like, you know, cause I'm a very thorough dude and I want to make sure shit is clean. Cause I know if I was to come and stay somewhere, I wouldn't want to like cut corners and, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to have to see that. So it's gross. So I'm trying to do a really good job. So, but I'm only getting like 20 rooms clean, you know, to my, you know, to my liking. So, so they pair me with this lady and she's like, uh, cause they're like, we got to figure out like why he's going so slow. So. So she's um, she's paired up with me, and, and the lady's nice enough. I mean, she she was okay, but see, it turns out the problem is is like I'm actually doing the job. The job was, uh, you know, doing the protocol that you're really expected. I I guess from what I uh, took from this, that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to cut corners at all cost, you know. Uh, and there's different little ways and things that they, uh, you know, that they show you to do just that, which I find highly disgusting i mean uh if you go in they gave you this little fucking it looked like a little tape thing and uh you go and you pull the sheets down and uh you know if you if it's not like if there's no like bodily fluids in it and it's just pubic hair or any sort of body hair you you pretty much clean all the body hair up with this tape thing and then you don't change your fucking sheets that alone makes me want to vomit so i mean and then other little cut corners like uh you know, if towels look clean, you know, they're clean. Uh, and like, uh, I could go on all fucking day. It's just disgusting. Like, the more I, when I worked there, it made me think, like, how the fuck could I ever stay in a hotel again? Because, like, I have, like, germaphobic and OCD tendencies out the fucking wazoo. So, I mean, uh, good good key to the audience here. Like, if, uh, if you want to stay in a clean place and you're out and it's a hotel, or it's not, it's not ever going to be clean. So. But that alone was disgusting, but yeah, I, I put up with that for, yeah, I think about a month, and uh, the, the shitty part was, is like, I, you know, I I didn't morally agree with it, like, I, I felt like I should do the job the way I would want it to be done and to clean, but uh, yeah, it wasn't like that, so, and uh, I'd, I'd always be wearing rubber gloves, and you'd come home and your fucking fingers were all, you know, just ready to fall off and wrinkled out, and it was disgusting, and uh but the you know the thing that the thing that always frustrated everybody in the staff was there was a retarded girl and she would intentionally go slow and do like two rooms a day. So like, yeah, I was you're already there for like twelve to fourteen hours a day. So by the time you're done at the end of the day, you don't want to fucking be there another two three hours all pitching in to help somebody else. So this girl would intentionally fucking go slow and do like two rooms in a course of fucking like twelve fourteen hours. And we'd have to go and try to, all, through, all of us would have to j chime in at the end and try to pick up. That alone was frustrating. But the straw that broke the camel's back for balls was, the day that made me quit was, uh, you're always supposed to be provided gloves. Because you're always going to find fucked up, gross, disgusting shit, which I always did. I had people fucking, you know, pissing in the trash cans, fucking uh, this and that. But the thing that was the most gross I did in fact find was, I pulled the bed sheets down, and you could kind of tell it was something suspect to begin with. I pulled the bed sheets down, and it was like the most horrific thing I've probably ever seen. It looked like a fucking CSI crime scene. Uh, there was blood and fucking just, you know, chunks and matter and shit all in the bed. And I, I had to go get somebody because I thought for sure, you know, the police were going to be called. It turns out. Uh, some poor girl tried to give herself like uh, a do-it-yourself abortion and it didn't work out and then apparently I don't even know if this it still haunts me to this day man I don't even know if this girl's alive or dead or whatnot but uh, she got the fuck out of there and uh, never to be seen again so but it was so disgusting and I didn't want to touch anything I, I went and told my supervisor this sea urchin with tits uh, you know like what was going on and she's like I don't give a fuck, just go clean it. And I'm like, well, at the time, I didn't have any gloves because they'd run out because I think they give you a box of gloves for, like, fucking 10 people, and there was, like, maybe 20 in there, and they were supposed to last you uh, 75 and a quarter years. So I told the lady, I'm like, I'm not touching none of that shit. 
because it's a biohazard and I don't want to get AIDS or I don't know what the fuck this bitch had. Like, I'm not touching that without gloves. And then she's like, what are you, some sort of fucking pussy? So I'm like, well, yeah, I guess I am a pussy. This pussy's fucking quit, you fucking whore. And I, I actually left. So uh, that was my end of my career at uh, said hotel. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was, one of the, that was the worst job I've ever had. If you got some time and you're looking to watch something, uh, if you have Netflix, I think it's on there now. It's called Haunters, and uh, the whole concept of it was it's uh, it's a documentary about people that build and manage and run uh, extreme and not extreme haunted attractions. Uh, by extreme, I I don't know if most people even know that this kind of thing exists. Uh, it was kind of an eye opener for me. I kind of always knew that there was things like out there, but I. Didn't know it was like to this degree. I mean, uh, there's haunted attractions now. I didn't even know this. That like, as long as you're signing a waiver that like, you know, you can't sue them. Uh, they can fucking zip tie you. They could fucking throw you in the back of a truck. They can do things like pretend that they're gonna rape you. Uh, they and the, there's places where they're like fully nude and they're doing all kinds of crazy shit with you. And, and I, I never knew that it was to like to this degree. Like I seen uh, an interesting thing where they could, they grab you and they had this hollowed out couch and they're like pulling you down into this fucking dungeon. And uh, if you they, if they, they they torture you like they, if you throw up, they'll fucking scoop it up and try to jam it back in your mouth. And I didn't realize like this kind of shit was going on. Like it's crazy. Like I, I since I've been a kid, I've been a lover of like. Uh, you know, haunted houses, haunted attractions, you know, anybody that knows me knows uh, Halloween is like my Christmas, I love it, but I mean, seeing that, I just, it made me wonder, like, uh, you know, how, how do I feel about this, like, I, or better yet, like, it made me wonder, like, who's the kind of fucking people that are so fucked up that they're, like, looking for this, like, you, like, like, it talks about this, like, I don't want to tell the whole thing, because I really encourage you guys to watch it, because, like, if you like documentaries as much as I do, I think it's, uh, pretty goddamn interesting but uh, i mean it, you know in an overview uh yeah it deals it talks to people that ran them and uh were operated in them and like that it, you know pretty much uh the intricate parts of their lives and uh you know people that work them and they get fucking beat up and hurt from scaring people and uh it, it focuses on the relationships of being in a relationship with these people that do this and uh yeah, I guess just the kind of people it takes, but it's uh, it's very weird. Like, I didn't know there was an opposing sect. Like, there's these like, quote-unquote extreme haunters, and uh, they think, like, the old school ways where you like, I guess I'm just an old dude, like, where I kind of like uh, the old haunted houses where you just go through and they you know, jump out you, and there's, like, they can't grab you, and, you know, they're not doing all kinds of nasty shit. Like, I, uh, I'm kind of the old school of that. I feel that's, uh, you know, more tasteful. Like, I... I think these kind of newer extreme quote unquote haunts aren't scary. It's just kind of gross and sick. Like, I don't think it's scary at all. Like, and I don't think it's cool to mentally fucking, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's cool at all to like try to mentally break somebody down and mentally fuck somebody up. Like that's not scaring somebody. That's just kind of being a fucking asshole, I think. But and I, I, I know it's before too long. I mean, regardless if you sign a waiver, like I can definitely see, you know, uh, the government stepping in and, uh, you know, you, you know, uh, getting involved here soon, uh, and becoming regulated like, uh, and that's going to change the uh, industry too. But, uh, yeah, very interesting fucking documentary. If, uh, if you, if you guys are into that kind of thing, it's uh, definitely a good watch. I don't want to tell you too, too much more about it, but it's definitely worth a check out. And, uh, other than that, uh, I'm looking forward to going to see the new Insidious. I don't know if anybody's seen that yet. Uh, I was a fan of that franchise. I didn't get to get out and do that yet. And uh, I'm, I still want to see the new Guillermo del Toro film, uh, Shape of Water. I need to get out and do that. But, uh, yeah, that's really pretty much everything I've gotten to see so far. But, uh, yeah, if you got a chance, man, you guys need to check that shit out. And if you have any recommendations for balls, uh, feel free to send them. All right, I'm here with uh, what I consider to be the future of horror punk, Mr. Jeremiah Blue Ingram, uh, lead singer and songwriter of one of my favorite bands, as you know, Rebel Flesh. Hey, it's an honor to chat with you, brother. Yeah, yeah, thanks for thanks for calling. Yeah, so uh, tell me, how exactly did the band uh, originate? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, actually, uh, Mike has been in a bunch of bands. Um, he was in... 
uh, the put downs and he was in the flash boys um in austin and um i had done a bunch of bands i had just had a baby uh in 2013 and i ended up writing like well we were kind of like waiting for our daughter to be born um i had written like a whole album in garage band on an ipad and my wife was just like, you know what, <laughs> just start a band, you need to start a band, you, you know, that's not going to, because I told her, I was like, you know, I won't play music, and so I figured out how this is going to work, and she's like, no, nah, just go ahead, so I didn't know, um, I didn't know exactly who to enlist, um, uh, so I just put an ad on Craigslist, and uh, I got a bunch of hits, and I ended up hanging out with Mike and Chris, their brothers, and, uh, yeah, just kind of, we were three piece for the first record, and then we got picked up by, uh, like a small, like a really small independent label out of Citrus Heights, California, called Midnight Jamboree, and they offered to do a full length with us, and so we did that. That's awesome, man. Like, it's a, it's awesome that you actually have a supportive wife, too. That I'm sure that helps a lot. Yeah, it does. And what, well, what really helps is that, um, Mike had just had a daughter a year before so that's kind of like what makes it work for both of us is that you know we kind of talked about it and like you know you gotta put like the kids first and you know the band has to be you know probably not even in the top three like priorities somebody's kid gets sick and you can't do the show or you can't rehearse or whatever it is like you're not allowed to be pissed off. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, we, under, that's understandable. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what, well, what age? Uh, what age did you realize you wanted to play music? Um, I was probably oh, probably in like sixth grade when um, I thought about it, and I kind of made a like a failed attempt at at learning how to play guitar. Um, and then it wasn't until maybe. 10th grade that I actually like started a band and uh, learned how to kind of play you know play a little bit better I wasn't you know very good but probably about 10th grade is when I when I started a band for the first time well that, that's great man because it actually leads me into my next question I mean what was some of your biggest musical influences growing up as opposed to now um I had a influence I was really into like rockabilly and stuff uh, when I was a teenager um, before that you know I was into like my my uncle when I was a kid got me into Stray Cat and Elvis and stuff like that and then I got into just like whatever was on you know MTV it was like Buck Rock you know Motley Crue and stuff like that and uh, around junior high I got into punk rock and stuff and um I don't know, feel like kind of in my twenties I got more into like roots music like um, bluegrass and um, like some folk and country and like you know here in Austin there's really good country bands it's not it's like real country like Dale Watson or um, like the Weary Boys or something I don't know it's cool it's totally different it's not what people think of when they think of country these days and so kind of had a um a pretty wide variety of interests and influence and I really try to um, kind of show that in in the band you know like an R sound you know yeah yeah it's funny uh, you say that because you can pick up uh, like you know you can pick up like uh, all the influences from different styles uh, on top of that and I think that's what makes you guys so unique and cool uh, thanks yeah yeah th I mean it's like uh, we come by it uh, honestly you know uh, also, I also wanted to ask you, man. Uh, yeah, who was your? I mean, was your family supportive when they decided you wanted to mu do music? Was there anybody that was like really uh, supportive growing up of that for you? I mean, was you always encouraged? Is your family musical? No, um, no one in my family is musical. Um, I didn't really get along with. Uh, I had a stepdad. I, I, you know, I still don't. Uh, yeah, same here, dude. I totally, I totally get yeah. you. <laughs> I don't. I, it's not. It's not like. 
like we hate each other or anything. It's just same just here. We just really... don't ever see it eye to eye, you know. Right. And it's not. We don't even just. We really just have never had a relationship. When I was a, so I was a kid, though, it was where it was, you know, a little more intense because you, you know, you're stuck with that person or whatever. But no, I didn't. There was nobody that was like behind it really. My mom helped me get equipment, you know, when I was a teenager. Um, but yeah, nobody was. Nah, nobody was really <laughs> interested <laughs> there. I think everybody that my family hated that I was in music. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, that's a shame, man. But I mean, that's cool. At least your mom helped you out. I mean, uh, yeah, hey, you've been. Yeah. How long have you guys been playing, like as a, as Rebel Flesh? Um, we started at the beginning of 2014. So this, like this month, actually, I think probably makes it four years. And I'm sure you've played plenty of shows. I mean, can you tell me? What uh, is the craziest thing you've ever saw while performing for people? I mean, has anything ever crazy happened? Um, like, probably, like, the craziest thing that I've seen in this band is we were doing a show. I don't even remember where in Texas we were. Um, I want to say it was the other side of Houston or something. Um, it was, like, this, it's like an art gallery that they hold shows, and it's, like, it's more of like a warehouse and uh they're playing on this like a stage and but there was like kind of an underneath to it and like, this kid was like really drunk and like some other kid uh like slammed into him and his face hit the like the stage or whatever it was and like his teeth like all of his teeth got knocked out oh shit yeah and like he like passed out and collapsed and like we weren't sure what was really happening we kind of just saw like a commotion and then like ambulance and stuff and show was over <laughs> so, <laughs> it was crazy I mean I, I hope I don't know whatever happened I hope it was okay though yeah, it's weird, man. Like, when something like that happens, you never really kind of... You always have that wonder as to, like, what happened? Is the dude okay, or is he uh, dead, or, I mean... Uh... Right, yeah, the, the, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if somebody was intentionally trying to pass him up, or... I don't know, so... I mean, it's always got to be... It's always got to be, like, interesting, at least. I mean, uh, what's the... What, what's the best and worst part about being in a band? Um... You know, I, for me, like, the best part is... Um, getting to like be with these dudes that are my friends you know and work on something creative so I have more fun at practice I think you know than I do at shows at shows I, I still get nervous when we play and stuff and um, there's like tons of good bands that we play with and yeah I think it's good you know to have such stiff competition um, so the, the good part I think is you know, being able to hang out with my friends, you know, and do something cool and creative and, and you know, new. And the worst part, um, I don't know, I guess when you say you're in a punk band, a lot of times people, they don't understand, like, it's a big umbrella of, like, all these different sort of nuanced styles of music, you know, under this, under, under, under the term punk and so a lot of people they don't realize that and they're like well what are you playing I'm, I'm in a punk band you know they just think oh your band can't play you know yeah but you kind of get pigeonholed into like what people's perceptions unfortunately is of punk I think right right so they just you say punk and they just assume oh you, you, you guys can't play and then you come out and you blow their fucking socks off <laughs> Well, yeah, if they ever show up, yeah. That's good, though, man. That's 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 a way to be. I mean, then uh, maybe it's better that way, and then they're like, holy shit. Right, and the bar is so low. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had mentioned playing with other bands. Uh, uh, is there any people, I know you mentioned you get along with a lot of people, but is there anybody that you absolutely played with that you're like, man, these guys are fucking douchebags. I can't handle them. Um, you don't have to name names, but, I mean, has it happened? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. You know, I, I think... Is it just that it's just their egos are so big? They're just dicks, or how? Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that some, you know, and it's weird too. It, it seems like to me, um, like on a local level, people seem to get like really big heads, and so it's like the dude that's in a band that's in the same city as us is more of a douche to me than like if we play with like the Dead Boys or, or you know whatever. Like those guys all seem really nice and cool. 
cool to us. You know, it's weird. It's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is. Hmm. Hey, what would you be? Uh, what would you be doing, like career-wise, if you weren't uh, playing in a band? Have you ever gave it any thought? Well, I mean, um, you know, I have a, I have a day job, so uh, I do non-destructive testing um, using ultrasound. So, I mean, I'm still, I'm still working with sound. Um, it's just a little different, but just differently incorporated. No, that's pretty cool. Yeah, though, right? yeah, yeah. But it's still, it's still, yeah, it's still just. It somehow kind of works together in a weird way. Well, that's that's a different kind of technology. But uh, you know, speaking of technology, do you feel it's become a a detriment or an asset to the music industry? Um, I feel like it's probably both. Um, How so? Well, so like I think um, it's probably never been easier to get your your shit out there. You know, like you just upload it to YouTube. Uh, post on social media I mean you could like text your song you can record them on your phone and send them to your friends like through text like it's really easy you know to do but it's like because it's that easy for everyone it's it's not like just that like it's a saturated market so to speak but it's that the market and I, I don't mean it as like a capitalistic sense. I just mean like, like the whole idea of being in a band, playing music, and recording and stuff, making records and whatever. It's like you used to be competing with all the good bands in your city or like the big three cities around you, or whatever. It's like now, as soon as you start, you're competing with like this global, uh, you know, global amount of, of, of talented bands and you know it's just it's tough yeah, I mean it was it was tough to, to find a band name that like wasn't taken you know yeah I mean it's like, like, it, it seems like there's way more pressure on uh, on artists now uh, being that it is that way right you just it's just you're not competing on a local level anymore you're not competing at a regional level or a national level it's like you really are competing like at a global level I mean just for your band name yeah that's true I, I get that man that's just I feel for you guys in that respect uh, but I mean not to change the topic but I mean is there anybody that you would like to uh, you know play with that like you guys haven't ever got to play with before I mean there's yeah there, I mean there's a ton of people that I would like to play with I mean, but, you know we'll play with anybody like here's your um, dream, uh, your dream act that you guys would love to like either open for or play with. Man, you know, like there's there's it scares me because I heard a story about like are you I guess it's kind of like a um how do you how do I put it it's sort of like you hear you shouldn't meet your idols you know what I mean. That's true, though, man. I've met people that I really hold on high regard. Like, you know, like if you ever go to, like, a horror movie convention or, you know, you meet some of your favorite bands. And I tell you what, uh, <laughs> there's people I really put to high regard that, like, they kind of let me down. And there's people that I met that I you hear stories about that you hear that they're that way. And then they end up being the total opposite. So, I mean, it's hard to say. Right, yeah. So, I mean, for me, because what I have in mind is, like, it would be really cool to play with the reformed misfits you know like with yeah, I just recently went to LA to see a man and it was amazing I'm sure I mean that would be up there for me um see it's funny you again, say that because like, you guys you guys like I honest, I honestly feel like you're almost kind of carrying the torch of that kind of horror punk and I think that's why I connect with you guys you guys so much thanks yeah I mean I just you know you hear so many horror stories about dancing being, being a dick and you know it's like we did. We played with the Misfits in San Antonio, but it was Jerry only. Um, How did you so feel about the? I know you're a Misfits fan. How did you feel about <laughs> Mikhail Graves? Like, did you like that era of the Misfits? Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny about that is actually I appreciate that era more now than I did then because like they don't like I don't think they really like cuss or anything, and so I can let my daughter like I can't let my daughter listen to the real Misfits or the original Misfits 
And, but she can listen to, like, songs like Scream and stuff like that. And dig and up her bones and, like, pretty much anything from right, American no, Psycho and Famous she, Monsters. She, yeah. It did seem like it has a more fun element bones. to it. Yeah, so so I actually like it. I have a better appreciation for it now than I did when it was around. Partly because I feel like it's safer for my daughter to listen. Because my daughter likes her own and uh, she likes spooky stuff. It's just, you know, because that's what we do. Same here. Um, <laughs> so the, but, I, that's but, yeah, but I'm not, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let, let her jam, you know, Earth AD or anything. So oh, not yeah. right now. So well, that's, that's understandable. Just my yeah, no doubt, dude. That's <laughs> totally understandable. That's great. Uh, great answer, by the way. Uh, uh, moving right along, though. I mean, uh, I'd love to ask you, like, being you're in a punk rock band, do you feel, uh, you know, any of your relationships has suffered due to being in the band, and why? Um. Yeah, I think it's tough on probably any musician um, kind of regardless of the level of uh, achievement or whatever you want to call it it's hard because I feel like like people that play music like real musicians um, like they do it because they have to do it you know and you don't always have people in your life that, that understand. understand that. Yeah. Right. And like, they just, they see it as some kind of, like, threat to their time with you or something. I don't know. I've, you know, I've had different, I've played music for a long time. I've had different experiences with different, different people or different family members or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it can be, it can be tough on, on the people around me. Hmm. They don't understand. They, you know, they try to understand for the most part, so i got to give them that. Well, that's but, cool. yeah, it's tough. Well, now, now moving to, I know you're a horror nut like I am, dude, and uh, it's, it's evident. This is the thing I've been waiting for. Uh, what is your top five picks of the best horror movies of all time? Uh, best horror movies of all time? I know it's a tough um, one, man, if you're like me, but i, I got to know. Like, yeah, I'm no, I'm just going to, it's, it's, it's like bands. Like, it's probably always changing, and it's, um, I'm just gonna go off the cuff. I'm not gonna give it like a shitload of thought. I'm gonna say uh, Evil Dead Two. That's, that's always my number one, dude. The, awesome. <laughs> um, for me, it's Evil Dead Two, Fright Night, oh. the original, the original Night of Living Dead, a solid choice. Um, Silver Bullet. Nice. You see, I don't think that movie gets enough uh, love, man. I'm really glad that you included that. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I do. I, I love it. I, I mean, I love Gary Busey, and I love like the fact that the the fucking preacher is the werewolf. Like, oh that's, yeah, dude, that's a great twist. I'm actually going to meet Busey at a nerd convention next month in Alice Cooper. I'm pretty excited about. Oh, uh, that's fucking awesome, dude. Alice Cooper too. Yeah, yeah, Steel City Con yeah. in Pittsburgh, where we're from. I'm I'm gonna go check them out. So I might I might bombard them with some silly questions too. Hopefully. <laughs> that's fucking seriously bad. And just, I just for uh, for the sake of of uh, all that is unholy, I'm gonna have to say the barn. Oh, the barn's fucking an amazing dude. In fact, that's <laughs> in fact, uh, very good friends of mine's the people that made it, and uh, they're actually the ones that turned me on to you guys. So I mean, I owe them quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're great people. All yeah. of them, man. I've been friends with Zane cool. Hershberger for probably 20 years now, and like he, uh, yeah, oh, he's dude, like, him and his wife are just awesome. And Cindy, dude. yeah, they they've been I've been friends with them for two decades, and they're just great people. And Justin's great, and everybody's uh, that, they're all great people, man. I really love them, dudes. Yeah, that, that whole group of people was so cool. We felt right at home, and we flew up there and met them, and they did they graciously did the video for for Harvest and everything for us, and just can't say enough good stuff about them and about the barn and 1031 I haven't seen it yet but yeah I'm actually waiting for my copy in the mail I I ordered it a, a while a little bit ago and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna review that on my show too because I'd like to I'd like to give him a, a you know some uh, recognition because like I, I love him too Rocky's awesome hmm. yeah Rocky's he's supposed to be sending me the DVD um, I'm just Waiting. Well, I tell you what, dude. I mean, if you'd like, I'm gonna check it out, and maybe if you check it out, if you'd like to, maybe uh, we could get together again sometime and uh, you know do our review. Totally, yeah, I'd be down. Great, man. I'll, I could look. I'll look yeah. forward to that then. But I, I got a. Before I let you go, I got a couple more questions, if you don't mind. Sure. What's your favorite like 
you, you would consider it like a diamond in the rough. Like, I mean, in like a, a horror film that nobody you think really uh, see, you know, you love it, but nobody's really seen it or heard of it that you really think is special. Besides, the, I mean, the, the barn, I, I think people at this point have, uh, it's no longer a diamond in the rough. It's pretty, uh, pretty wide known. I also had to choose that, but I mean like an old, like, you know, something that nobody's ever heard of that you just, uh, you're surprised because it's so good and you, something you want to turn someone on to. What, what do you tell people? You know, I don't, um, I feel like, I feel like everybody knows so much because of the internet now that like, there's not a movie that I could, that I could name that, that doesn't get enough attention, um. I think one that that I like that um, I, you know I don't even know if it's necessarily like a, a horror movie. Uh, I I thought it would be. I remember renting it as a little kid. Um, the Devil Bat. Oh wow! I don't even know if I've ever even seen that. I mean, I might have to. You might turn me on to this one. <laughs> okay, cool. I it's I think it's from like the forties or. Oh wow. It's got to be the 40s or the 50s, but it's called the Devil Bat. It's got Bela Lugosi in it. Holy shit. And and so that's why, you know, I rented it. I was like, what? It's fucking Bela Lugosi. It's called fucking Devil Bat. It's got to be badass. That's, yeah, it's a no-brainer for sure. Yeah, and it's totally not even like what you would think it's about. Like, I don't know. It's cool. Like, I, I feel like it's more of like maybe like a thriller kind of mystery they like build it as horror because they could sell it with the title and let's spell it go see like that I don't know um, but it, I mean regardless like it's fucking good and you know, if you haven't seen it watch it it's fucking good that's awesome man like uh, yeah Zane actually turned me on to a couple of my choices there was this old movie called Curse of the Blue Lights I think is uh, virtually unheard of, and it's always really cool. And there's one called uh, Spookies. I always thought was kind of kind of cool. Neon, oh, yeah. Neon Maniacs. I always thought those don't kind of get enough love. You're right. Yeah, the Neon Maniacs, fucking killer. Oh man, absolutely. But uh, yeah, I got I got a funny one here for you, man. If you'd like to, uh, let's just sure, say they sure. did a biopic of the band, like a punk rock biopic. Who? Uh, what actor would you think would be best to portray you? Um. Like they always get that kind of shit wrong. I know that's like, why I wanted to ask you. I'd, I'd rather have somebody like <laughs> pick what they want. Okay, like, so, so if I could, if, if like in a fantasy, like I could just fucking pick anybody. For yeah, man, living dead, anybody. Ever. Well, surely you don't want to be dead playing you, I guess. <laughs> I would, I would say '80s Mickey Rourke could probably do me justice. Oh man, that's a good choice. Fuck yeah, he was bad as hell <laughs> until like, he got all that fish. fucked up, uh, you know, botched. That's fucking... what I'm saying. Like it's got to be like Rumblefish. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mickey Rourke, I'll fuck you. There you go. Awesome, dude. Great <laughs> choice. Uh, all right. Well, uh, while we're trying to wrap it up with you here, but uh, okay. How ma- <laughs> this might be a funny one. Uh, how many groupies have you had in a day in your, in your, I mean, in your career in music? You don't even necessarily I'm have not, to be in Rebel Flesh. I don't think, I don't think it, for, for me, that's not, that's never happened. Never had a groupie. No, so you've always kind of been in a monogamous relationship. Well, yeah, that, and I just, <laughs> I don't think, uh, I think like, there's a certain level, like of, like arena or something that you probably have to be playing. I don't know. So there's no um, group. There's not even like a kind of regular groupy kind of scene, like in a you know like a like a smaller smaller kind of venues. I don't. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I haven't, I haven't been lucky enough or unlucky enough to <laughs> to, to tap into that. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's just there's gotta be, but I don't. You know, you don't. I've never encountered. It's, it's nothing you're worried about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, I got a serious good, one here good, for you. Good, good question, though, dude. Good oh, question. Oh, thanks, man. I, I, I mean the, the that, real shit. <laughs> that means a lot to me. I was afraid I didn't want to offend you with that one, but I do like asking it's some funny, fucking no, crazy not shit, at all, man. Like, dude. I've been trying to keep him like kind of. story to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I've been, I usually ask way crazier shit than this, but, like, I'd actually like to talk to you again. So <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> dude, don't hold back. <laughs> oh, well, fuck. I mean, all right, here's a serious one, and then, you know. This is actually it's 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 a simple question, but like uh, you know, it's you know what, what scares you in life? Like, what is your biggest fear? Um, my fast answer is the president. 
Like why in this day and age I can totally <laughs> understand how you would feel like, that way. My, my fast answer is fucking Donald Trump, but my honest answer is, um, you know, the thing that scares me the most is uh, like anything concerning my kid. You know, like I just freaks me out. You know, like I just don't want anything to happen to my kid. I, don't, I want everything to be cool. Like she's got like this thing with her teeth, and they had to like put her under to do the dental work on it. I'll just like fucking decide myself. And I just, <laughs> I don't know. Like that, to, that's the scariest shit to me. It's just like something happening to my daughter. Well, that's 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 uh, that's just that's awesome, dude. I I totally feel the same way. I uh, I feel the same way about my fiance's daughter. I love her like my own, and like you know, you get you're so attached. Like you'd rather have, you'd rather go through any sort of pain than see them go through. Sure. Anything, so. One one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Already, dude. That that's a that's a great answer. I mean, uh, actually, I have I have one just as being a fan of you guys that I've always wondered. I mean, I know you will pull a lot of stuff from classic horror films, but I mean. Other than that, where do you draw your, you know, your deepest inspiration for lyrically for uh, for writing songs? Um, I, you know, really, I write about, um, I write about my life, um, which like some of that is fucking scary, you know, or horrible. Um, I, you know, there's like a ton of scary shit in the news all the time, and you know, sometimes that. <clears throat> Like, sometimes that will inspire a song because it's just so fucking crazy. Um, so, just just kind of like, it's the everyday stuff is, you know, life can be pretty horrible and not to sound, you know, I'm not like depressed or anything, but, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a shitload of horror in everyday life, you know? And... I, I know exactly I mean, I think, what you mean, man. Like, I always <laughs> think of, like, the Monster Club with Vincent Price, like, where there's no scarier monster than man, you know? Sure, yeah. And, and I mean, you know, um, just, like, the choices that people make and, you know, sometimes the choices that people are forced to make and the shit that people have to do, like, survive or whatever, it's like, those are fucking horror stories, you know, a lot of times. And, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, around like a bunch of crazy shit, you know, and yeah, same I don't have I, much. I tell people shit about my life, and like they think I'm making it up. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I try to minimize it. You know, now, you know, I'm older and I got more control over things. You know, uh, but ah, there's a bunch of fucking scary shit out there, man. You don't have to look too far to um, to get you know, scared of, of reality. So, like, I like to write songs that um, kind of just, like, talk about shit that, you know, is uncomfortable to talk about, maybe, and, you know, for myself. You know, I, you know, I, I, a lot of my stuff, I had a, I was, I was married once before, and, uh, my ex-wife ended up committing suicide. Oh my god! Um, yeah, it was it was about three years um, after we had been divorced and everything. And, but it was it was something that I was towards the end of our marriage. Like I kind of felt like that something like that would happen. Mm -hmm. um, just with like she had, she had some like mental stuff going on that she didn't always stay on top of and you know when it happened it was just it hit me pretty hard and I, you know, I didn't know it would and so like I've written a lot of stuff about that you know about the way that that makes me feel you know so that's almost like in a sense uh, therapeutic yeah totally yeah it, it really is you know I write about it and uh, you know there's nothing I can do to change it um I hate that it happened um so yeah, so like a lot of the stuff I write about is just like from my life, you know. Well, that's I mean that's that's that, that, that that's the best of. <laughs> but as it broke, man, I guess I wouldn't fix it because like what you're doing right now is incredible. So uh, hopefully you have some but, you know, but, hopefully you have some better things that you know some more happier things to pull from. But uh, but, well, but you know you know the, I try you know I try to write stuff that's about my life that's personal. But I try to. Um, I try to actually write it in a general way that can be taken 
and, like open you know, up the presentation. Sure, yeah. So like you can hear a song and you can internalize it and you're like, dude, that's totally about me. You know, something <laughs> right, yeah. And, and you know, um, so you know, I don't, I, you know, I still try to put some art to it, you know. Well, that indeed, sir, you do, man. Like, I think that's why uh, I think that's, that's why you stand out from a lot of these people, man. Because, like, I hear a lot of modern punk bands nowadays, and it's kind of fucking meaningless. Like, you're pointless. Like, I'm a dude that's really examining lyrics, and I connect hard to that kind of shit. And it seems like most people nowadays just kind of have a, you know, clever hook, and there's really, it's all style over substance. I mean. Yeah, yeah. And then I think a lot of times in, like, the, um, like the darker kind of bands, the themes are really played out, you know. Yeah, it's almost way too theatrical now. Like when we were growing up, it was kind of, it, it was a cool, it was a different thing entirely. I don't want to sound like a curmudgeonly old fuck, but I mean, I guess I'll risk doing that. But then, now it just yeah. seems like there's more that there's more focus on that and less of any sort of you know any sort of meat to the uh, to the whole thing. Well, yeah, and you know, honestly, what I like, what I really liked about the original Misfits, um, you know, you listen to the static age stuff you know and uh he's just right he's right you know dancers writing about just kind of like weird stuff you know like angel fuck and stuff that you never uh, really heard about before i mean that shit was revolutionary in my opinion like right right it kind of took everything and turned it on its ear uh, yeah and i feel like the people that that were influenced by them a lot of times they get caught up in like maybe like the image and they get caught up in like the simplicity and then they get caught up in like, oh, they used a few like B horror movie themes and then they've unwittingly created this like kind of stupid formula, you know? Yeah, it is. It's kind of like formulaic and like, uh, you know, by the numbers at this point. Right. And I feel like all the, like the original Misfit stuff, like Dean for a Jackal and She and, uh, What's another one that's really fucking gets just under just really gives me like chills like Skulls does that for me. I love skulls. That's one of my skulls, favorite. Yeah. And you know, the stuff, you know, what he's writing about is, you know, not it's you know, it's not mostly horror movies, you know, a lot of it's like he's talking just about like whatever. Just weird shit. You know, it's just like really weird shit. So, I don't know, I feel like what makes them cool sort of is out of, like people don't really recognize like what it really is that makes them cool and sets them apart from everybody else I agree is there any bands out there nowadays like like modern bands that you feel actually are doing that um there's you know there's lots of bands that I like I like all kinds of different uh music and you know, styles and stuff. I don't know, you know, I don't think there's any band out there that I could say is just like totally, you know, revolutionizing anything though. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you guys, that's why you stand out so much. I know I've said it a hundred times already, but, uh, you know, there, there's like a certain tier, and then, like, if there's, you're, like, way beyond that tier. Like, that's why, whenever I first heard you guys, I'm like, wow, this is like, uh, this is like a, like a, a life changer, because, like, you kind of wait for, I consider you guys to be the diamond in the rough, man. Like, when I first heard you, like, I'm like, wow, like, this, this is something else, so... Thank you, that's probably, like, the coolest compliment we've ever got. Thank oh, you. thanks, man. Well, I... But like now, I, I gotta ask you some real serious shit. So preparing, uh, you know, batting down the hatch right here. Uh, if you have to choose right. between the monsters or the Adams family, like which way are you gonna go, dude? Okay, so like if we're talking like strictly TV series, I'm gonna go monsters. Yeah. Uh, yes. But the Adams family movies, like in the '90s, are cool as shit. Oh, yeah, you know, and, I think um, I enjoyed the movies more than I did the show. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, I don't know what it was about the show that didn't. I always work thought it was like me. a pale imitation of the monsters. I mean, I, they were on a, on some level, I still enjoy it. And I think it's decent, but I definitely think it's highly overrated. Like I always thought the monsters was brilliant, and I'm a 41 year old dude now, and I love it every bit as I did as when I was a little kid. Like it never gets old to me. Yeah, I think you know what I think for me is that like I could identify the monsters like exactly like that's Frankenstein, that's fucking Dracula, that's Bride of Frankenstein, or that's Bride of Dracula basically, that's the Wolf Man or Kid or whatever you know. Like I felt like I could identify like they used like the like universal horror 
their archetypes for their uh, platform, you know, and then it's like Adam Sandler is kind of like, what the fuck is Gomez? Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty is, much. Like, you know, he's a, what, is he a fucking vampire? Is he just, he's like, yeah, he's just some, like, horny like, dude in a suit with a goofy eyes. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work on me when I was a kid, but then I got a little bit older and I saw the movies in the 90s. I thought the movies were cool. All right, even on to an even more important question. I know you're into this as much as I am. We've talked actually off the air. Uh, favorite episodes of Twilight Zone? It could be old one. It could be 80s. It could be whatever down the pipeline. So. You know, the, those, it's again, it's like bands. You know, it's like those changed for me, too. Um, well, I'll start you out, man. I think uh, Howling Man's uh, definitely one of my faves. Yeah, no, I think consistently, like, Howling Man and... Uh, Living Doll, you like that one? I like that one. I like the How to Serve Man. Oh yeah, that's a great one, man. I like the, I like Nick of Time Man with Shatner, that little goofy fucking uh, prediction thing. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that that was way fucking cool. Shatner was really good in the. Um, what's that other one? Was uh, character at fifty thousand feet? Yeah, that one's good. Um. This isn't a Shatner one, um, but it's that, it's like, I don't know the name of it, but it's like this, I think it's like a chick, maybe it's a chick and a dude, um, they're like living in this house, and it's everything like seems cool, but they don't remember like how they got there, and like, realize like, nothing like really works, like. Oh, kind of shit, like, man. I know which one you're talking about. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, hey, if any of you guys at home remember what episode that is, uh, feel free to email the show at wendychops1976 at gmail.com. Tell us your favorite episodes as well. Right. So they, they start, like, they spend the whole episode sort of, like, trying to figure out, like, what the fuck's going on. And then, like, just, like, the, the front window, like, the curtains just, yeah. like, open at the end. Mm -hmm. And they're in a fucking, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking about, man. It's just I, I could go on all fucking night, man. But I mean, to name a few, that's just uh, I my one of my favorite ones, actually, surprisingly enough, is uh, from the eighties, man. Do you ever see? Uh, do you ever? You, I don't know if you ever seen the one, uh, the Shadow Man. Do you ever see that one? I don't know. I don't remember the it was name. About like this, I felt, and I always connected with because like I was a bullied kid growing up, and like it was about this bullied kid and. You know, he didn't, he didn't have a dad. He was kind of, like, living with a single mom, and he didn't know how to fight, and everybody pick on him and beat the shit out of him, and uh, he ended up befriending the, the monster under his bed. It was the Shadow Man, and, like, the Shadow Man would pretty much kill all these fucking people that would, you know, bully him, and, like, uh, there's just a great twist to it, man. I didn't want to give it away, but it's such a disturbing episode. Oh, that's episode. cool. I'll have to look it up now. That sounds badass. Oh, uh, man, and there's, there's, there was one where, like, this goofy... Uh, yeah, but that was really... Uh, I really wish uh, that was a little more well received now I, I would love that they had so many good episodes just went by the wayside there was one of, I think I was telling you about off the air about the this kid get, it's so fucking weird too I don't even know if it's like awesome it's just so bizarre it always stuck with me when I was a kid it was like uh, this kid it was like a popular children's show and like they bring him home this video cassette and it more or less tell it, you know teaches him how to do black magic <laughs> it's fucking crazy what the fuck that's crazy but yeah you gotta see that's it cool. yeah, yeah I gotta check it out Okay, now, you know, I mean, a lot of your uh, songs revolve around, like, horror movie elements and things. I mean, have you ever yourself had, uh, you know, any experiences with the quote-unquote supernatural? Um, so I don't think I have, but um, around 2010, had to be 2010. Yeah, so like around 2010, maybe 09, um, I used to live in this really old house, kind of out in the country, and uh, I had a band, <clears throat> a different band we were doing, kind of like, just weird, sort of like dark Americana, uh, just like rockabilly kind of roots type thing, and we were rehearsing, we used to rehearse out there at the house, and... Um, so we were out there one night and we were practicing. And the way that we would practice is we have the drums in the corner of the room. And then everybody would just kind of stand out around the drums. And I was usually in the middle. And then the bass player, I would face the drummer, the bass player, 
everybody basically faced me and I stood in the opposite corner where the door was and I faced everybody else. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, so that's just how, that's just how we rehearsed. And so we were, we were rehearsing that whatever night it was and we're playing the song and everything seems, you know, seems normal. And then close to the end of whatever song we were doing, like everybody just got this fucking crazy look on their face, like just like saucer eyes. And they just like really freaked out. And I thought, I thought, you know, like my nose was bleeding or something. I was like, what the fuck are they looking at? You know? And but they still tried, it's that like, professionalism or whatever like we still like finish the song right yeah. they didn't stop so they you know, okay it's nothing bad or my fucking flies open or something <laughs> so as soon as we stopped they all said like at the same time on top of each other did you fucking see that and you know of course like I didn't I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about I thought it was like a joke or something um Okay, so I'm a complete skeptic when everybody said that they saw something weird and unexplained uh, behind me at, at practice. I, I didn't believe them. Right away, I was like, all right, fine, everybody, different rooms. Here's a piece of paper, here's a pen. Draw what you saw. Because I really thought, I was like, man, they are fucking with me. Um because wouldn't that be funny? You're like, oh, it spooked Jeremiah out, you know? <laughs> yeah, that'd be the... That'd he's be... so creepy. He writes all these creepy lyrics. Like, let's Yeah, we're going to get him now. Fuck him. <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's where my, you know, whatever that says about me, uh, that's that's where my mind, I was just like, they're fucking with me. And so I was like, I totally, I totally busted them because this, there's no way they got their fucking lie together like so good where they're going to draw the same shit. So anyway... Ask them to go in different rooms, draw what they saw. It doesn't take, you know, like a minute. And everybody comes out and they drew pretty much, pretty much the same thing. What did, um, it, what did it look like? It looked like, it looked like a, like a person. Um, but like maybe, <clears throat> it looked like a head and shoulders, like no neck, like. Oh man, it's um, crazy! Like mystics and bones. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and it was like really, it was really big. Like, so, like two of the people just drew kind of like a figure, but um, the other one of the guys actually like took his time and like drew like um, like a Bob like Ross this, picture. Well, like, well, like he like drew the scene, right? So he like drew the doorway, and he kind of like drew me where I was standing in the doorway, mm -hmm. and he like he like pointed shit out he's like okay so this room that we're in is lit you're standing in the doorway the doorway is dark behind you because the lights are off in the house and it was nighttime. Hmm. There, there's a hall um, that leads to the kitchen and the living room that's behind that doorway there was a light on in the living room so the hallway is sort of like this shadow um you can see that there's pictures on the wall, but you can't see what the pictures are, right? So it's like dark, but it's not completely dark. Hmm. <clears throat> and so he kind of like pointed all that out, his drawing. And so the thing was standing behind me, and it was standing partially on one wall and partially on another wall, and it was darker than the shadows. Wow, that's crazy, man. Yeah, and it was they, they all just saw it like walk up behind me, and you know, like I saw all of them react at the same time. Like, like they weren't looking at each other; they were all looking at me. You know? Yeah. And so they all saw it like at the same time. I didn't see it, so I can't. You know, I don't. I don't know, you judging know, from what I'm hearing, that might not be such a bad thing, dude. I probably would have shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> he would have thought, like, right. your songs were, uh, you know, demon resurrection passages, Jesus. <laughs> right, yeah, I don't know. Um, I know, you know, the house that, that I was living in was built, like, in the, I think, after that, like, I started looking it up. So, like, the house was built in, like, the 20s or something, 
And that alone spooks me out, man. Like when shit's that old, like you don't know what the fuck went down there or what happened or. Yeah, it, it was old, and it was only part of the original structure. And it had recently, like before we bought it, like the year before we bought it, it had been remodeled and torn down. Like a lot of it had been torn down. All that was left was like these parts or whatever <clears throat> that they remodeled. So that's like that all the ingredients right there, right? Like it's like really old, and then they fucking remodeled it. So. <laughs> Well, that's a, that's a, yeah. that almost sounds like a that sounds like a horror story itself. <laughs> right? It, yeah, it, it definitely. You know, it's got like the the, the stereotypical ingredients for horse. But you know, I didn't see anything. I can't say, you know, one way or another. But I tried to to disprove it uh, right away, and I, and I felt like I <laughs> felt like I proved it. I didn't disprove it, so. <laughs> Well, that, I don't know how you could top that, but like I'm gonna try to wind things up so I don't keep you all day. But uh, wow, that's, sure, that, yeah, that, was, that was long. That was worth its fucking price of admission alone. Uh, that was that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, last couple questions. Uh, the last thing I'd like to ask you is like, what do you enjoy to watch that is non horror related? Um, I like. Um, I don't get like a lot of free time to watch shit. Um. But, you know, I like to watch, like, I'm a YouTube weirdo, so I like to watch, like, just, like, I think of just, like, random shit, you know, like, oh, I wonder if there's footage of Joan Jett playing in 1981. Oh, that's awesome, though. But, I like to do a lot of that. I can do, like, random shit like that. And then I like, um, I guess it's still kind of horror, but it's maybe more sci-fi, um, Black Mirror on Netflix. Everyone keeps talking about that. I haven't had a chance to check it out. I've been pretty busy myself. Oh, I'm gonna make a dude. point to you watch it, man. I keep hearing dude, that getting compared to the Twilight Zone. So, yeah, I'm gonna ch- dude, it, under your recommendation. It, I'm definitely gonna check it out for sure. It is so much like the Twilight Zone. Like you'll dig it. There's no way you won't dig it. <laughs> and lastly, dude, I'll wrap this up. Uh, I, what I really would like to know is, being a fan of yours, uh, you know, can you tell me a little bit about uh, the new album and, you know, any details as to when it's coming out? I mean, I heard Shadows and, like, uh, what is it, uh, what is it, uh, what's the title of it? Uh, Kill With Your Kiss, is that it? Yeah, the title's Kill With Your Kiss. Um, so, yeah, so this one is, I think it's going to be 12 songs, um, Shadows from the movie 1031 is going to be on it. And we wrote a song for a, a podcast, a local podcast in Austin. I, I heard that. i seen it on your uh, on the Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. So, it's like, the name of their podcast that they also do, like, a show for on YouTube is called Zombie Life TV or Zombie Life Television. Yeah, well, and so then this is, they asked us to write the intro for it, which I don't, <laughs> I don't think they used it, and I don't know if, like, they just didn't like it or what. But they asked us for it. I wrote it, and the only stipulation was that it had to be a minute long. So, it's a minute long, and it's called Zombie Life TV. So, that's going to be on there. And then the rest of the shit on there is. It's like more rock and roll. Like, like I feel like each record just keeps getting less, like more rock and roll. Like you and, have them. Yeah. So this one is is when I say more rock and roll, I mean like more rock and roll than punk rock. Like, so like the first one would be like the punkest record maybe, and then we can kind of the next one we're moving away. You know, it's still got the same spirit, you know, punk spirit and stuff. Um, but more rock and roll. So this one is probably going to be like the most rock and roll out of. Uh, That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. I mean, it's nice to, uh, you know, to change things up a little bit here and there. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want to keep writing the same stuff, you know. So. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any ideas to when we can look forward to hearing it? Um, we're supposed to be in the studio this month. We're supposed to be in this weekend, but um, the guy that does our recording has death in the family, so. No, oh, that's terrible. Uh, we're gonna do. We're still gonna push for like a Valentine's release, you know. However, uh, if we can or if we can't, that's still like our goal. So. Well, awesome. So man. that I'm tells looking... you. So that tells that tells you how long it takes us to make a record. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Two days. Well, I'll, buy, I'll still be on pins and needles, man. Uh, there you have it, man. Uh, this is Balls, and I highly recommend you guys seek out Rebel Flesh Fuckers and you you buy and listen to every fucking thing they put out because. They're the future, the future of war punk uh, audience. So please go out, buy their shit, support them, and keep watch for that new album, man. And thanks again, man. Thanks, Jeremiah, for being so fucking cool. Thank you, man. Coming in and doing this. I really appreciate it. 
For sure, man. Thanks for having me. Not a problem, man. Peace and love. 